Hello and welcome to Beyond Games, the YouTube gaming channel all about what's next. I'm John Jordan. So what we're looking at today is some research from Newzu. So Newzu, a very well uh, known company in the gaming space, does lots of uh, market analysis, market intelligence, sort of predicting what it thinks is going to happen in the gaming sector and various parts of the gaming sector over the next few years. Um, obviously not always correct. <laughs> very difficult to predict the future as we found out <laughs> in 2020. Um, so uh, whenever I look at these reports, I'm, I'm interested in, in kind of the framing and the trends rather than the actual numbers. I think we get much too carried away with numbers, which are obviously um, uh, kind of fairly speculative. Uh, you know, the newsy people, people there, the analysts are very clever, um, but no one clearly can kind of sort of predict exact numbers. But um, enough of that. So um, this is their uh, report about cloud gaming. So cloud gaming. Is, is kind of one of these big technologies that have been around really for you know 10 years. There's been various forms of people attempting to sort of run games in data centers and and then allow people with without kind of the uh, very high-end hardware to play some of these high-end games. Um, so kind of sort of streaming, the idea of sort of streaming games, I guess, so there's different ways of doing it. Um, this is interesting to see. I'm not going to go through the full report. Obviously, you can download it from the NewZoo website if you want to. Um, but this is just have a quick look at their forecast. So I always think these are, these are kind of funny, <laughs> these, um, these, these graphs. And this is particularly funny because there's a big gap in the middle. So um, <laughs> I, don't know why they, I don't know why they haven't filled in the gap. It's odd. So anyway, uh, their, their best estimate is currently in 2020, we had about $630 million of uh, revenue around these gaming, uh, streaming cloud gaming sort of um, products. Um, their estimate is we're going to more than double in 2021, so probably 1.5 million really um, in round figures. And then um, a bit more speculative, a lot more speculative that they, they sort of have this random <laughs> sort of thing in, in 2023, we're going to be f over $5 billion. Who knows? Um, obviously, in all these kind of, uh, in all these market analysis sort of uh, reports, Basically, there is this kind of number number go up sort of mentality. Um, so it's never number go down, um, always number go up. And it's just, I guess, a question of how how fast they think the number's going to go up. Let's have a, have a look and see how they've got to these figures, I suppose. That's the interesting bit. So um, so they see a massive jump in 2021. Um, and um, who are the companies driving this? So we have Microsoft uh, has launched xCloud as part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So an Ultimate Game Pass now gets you xCloud um, for free. That's obviously going to drive, not necessarily drive a lot of money uh, per se, but going to drive, potentially drive a lot of usage. We have Amazon and Facebook are coming up with their own services. Um, uh, and NVIDIA has had this GeForce Now service for, for a long time, um, but now it has over 800 titles. Um, they had some issues last year with um, licensing of certain games. Um, and how, how they kind of uh, <laughs> how that money gets split up between um, uh, the various companies involved, and then we have these smaller independent services, not from these big enormous um, kind of tech companies, but you know there's a bit more interesting stuff going on, um, and interesting to see that um, that we're seeing kind of local telecoms companies who um, have kind of been cut out of the value chain a lot, certainly mobile in in the last decade, maybe being able to kind of use their infrastructure in in a in a new way. So uh, what we're thinking about user numbers. So this is not money. This is uh, people paying. So paying, not playing. So they reckon at the end of this year, there'll be almost 24 million people paying for cloud gaming services in some some form. Um, not always paying directly. Maybe maybe as, as, as with the Xbox um, game pass, you kind of you kind of you're paying already for that and you get this sort of stuff for free. Um, I don't know why that hasn't launched. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, here we go. So here is here's a nice graph of some of the companies involved, some of which um, we've heard of, some of which we haven't. Um, so we have a split here, beta, beta, beta C. This is this is business to consumer. So these are consumer facing uh, companies, and these are B two B business to business. So these are technology companies that are kind of running back end services that maybe some of these companies are using. So maybe maybe. Um, uh, let's have an example. Can't, can't choose a good example. Um, anyway, so, some of the, some of these companies will be using some of these backend services. Uh, so these these are not companies that we would know, but we might be using their their um, their uh, technology or their sort of a compute power. Um, and what we've got here, so we've got cloud gaming platforms and the same content services. So these are these are just kind of companies that have games, uh, nothing to do with cloud. Um, uh, these are cloud platforms, and, and in the middle you have sort of uh, people who have content services and cloud gaming platforms. Um, so these are kind of where the big names are. This is where Xbox is, Facebook, uh, Sony, 
Uh, Luna is the micro, excuse me, is the Amazon uh, service Stadia. Stadia is the Google service. Had a bit of a um, rocky uh, start, changed its um, strategy. We have uh, East uh, NetEase Games, second biggest uh, Chinese games company. Uh, we have AntStream, uh, which I think is another Chinese company. So it's part of Alibaba. Uh, maybe I'm confusing my ants there. Uh, my Clay, My Games Cloud. That's uh, My Clay. My Games, excuse me, is a uh, biggest Russian publisher. And we have a few of these kind of kind of pure pure play um, cloud services, um, Blacknut and Play Key. Hatch Kids is uh, spun out of uh, Rovio, so that's a kind of streaming service for mobile games for kids. So quite a lot of companies in here, all sort of fighting fighting out over um, the kind of the this, this money pile. And obviously, you need content in order to get people to pay up pay for streaming services. Um, so content is very important, uh, and maybe I guess over time. Or even now, all, all of these publishers have to have a strategy about what is their, cl their cloud gaming strategy um, and how is that going to change um, in, in future years. So, um, yeah, there we go. That's, that's sort of it, really. If, if you want to get the full report, um, you can go and check it out. Um, I guess, as with lots of technology, um, they're... they're it, it sort of needs a sort of killer app. It, need, it needs something to really kind of kick it off. So, so the, the problem with these reports tends to be is they predict sort of steady growth. Um, and what generally happens is no growth happens and then you get massive, <laughs> massive growth. And it's very difficult to predict exactly what year that big growth happens in because it's, it's not, um, it's a, a weird combination of factors. It could be, could be a big game. It could be maybe, um, data prices get really low for some reason. Um, it could be obviously something like COVID coming in and everyone's sitting at home for much longer periods of time and wanting access to games and playing in a different way. So, um, take these figures with a pinch of salt. Um, I guess what's interesting is to look at, at these companies and, and if you're really into cloud gaming, see, see, see what their strategy is. How much are they charging? What content are they looking to uh, roll up there? Is it just existing content that they're putting on the cloud? Is anyone building crazy uh, kind of games that really use um, streaming um, and couldn't really work any other way? Um, that's the interesting thing. So anyway, um, big, a big one to watch uh, beyond gaming is, is, is cloud and these kind of uh, these streaming services. And I guess what's really interesting is you, you sort of start to mash up kind of gaming and sort of spectators who are watching people play and they have the whole kind of esports e and influencers and, 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 and kind of Twitch and all that sort of stuff um, starts to create some interesting new business models, I think, um, where you start to have value transferring between people who are playing games, people who are watching games, games companies, it all becomes um, an interesting uh, mess. And we like messes uh, when it comes to gaming because that allows new things to emerge. So uh, thanks for watching uh, the video. This is Beyond Gaming, where we're thinking about where games is going next, also thinking about how games are influencing wider society. These two things are happening at a increasing pace. So I hope you'll come along for the ride. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.